Life ours. Your digital world secured. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a ransomware and a cyber vaccine session. Uh, looking forward to today to present you our latest and greatest from the landscape of cyber extortion and why cyber vaccines are important element in today's cyber security, incident response, maturity posture for any enterprise. A little bit about LifeWorks. We are a New York-based incident response firm. We conduct heavily technical assessments. Um, we do increase maturity and resiliency through our advisory practice. And we've been very well known for our digital forensics that we conducted for various agencies and uh, federal and state court systems. Today's agenda is present you a little bit about the ransomware that you heard before, but more from a perspective of the cyber ambulance, cyber 911 phone call, someone who is actually responding to through crisis when, when the enterprise or the entity is under extortion. I'm going to touch on a case study over a dry deck that being followed by the federal law enforcement agency in the United States. We'll discuss techniques, tactics, and procedures, very similar to the MITRE framework that you are familiar with, and um, uh, discuss the new era of the cyber vaccination and why they are important. And I'll also give you prevention and protection tip at the end. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. Uh, feel free to connect with us at alifers.com. Our hotline number is included. You can also feel free to connect me on a LinkedIn or a Twitter or any other member uh, from our team that uh, you can perhaps find on a LinkedIn. I often do get a question. Who do we really work with and where our signature really comes in? feel very privileged and honored that we had multiple cases that were submitted to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and we have four indictments that I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. Um, we have a great relationship with the Department of Homeland Security and uh, Assistant Director John Felker, who runs the CISA Secret Service, that we submitted some of the cases, especially for Lazarus Group related to the cryptocurrency hacking. Um, we have touched with the Interpol and... Uh, our team in Europe won CyberShield 2016 NATO competition as the best team for one of the most prestigious uh, cyber operation and, um, in, in, on the world. So amazing team led by Lukas Lavichka and Slamovri Ivanchik uh, that we uh, do have in our possession. Our success stories include the Exedetic, the forum that perhaps Many of you have seen in December 2018. Uh, another one is the indictment of two Iranians for a Samson. We submitted quite a bit of evidence to the FBI division in Newark. And uh, another story is the APT-10 nation state threat actors, indictment of two individuals. And you've probably seen the cryptocurrency hacking of an uh, entity in uh, Slovenia that for attention across the continent between the cooperation of Europol, the FBI, the United States Secret Service, and the Southern District of New York. I often get a question, well, why there is a hacking? I'm sure you all like the Da Vinci Code. Just admit it. It's all about a code. Even you are defined by your own DNA code. Computers, electronic systems, digitally connected world is connected through computer code. That computer code transmits anything that we know of from our browsers to servers to the internet. That's how we communicate. So it's there. Everything is about a code. Let there be the code. The code has vulnerabilities. There's no way 
that even large manufacturers, for example, as Apple or Samsung, can completely QA their phones. And you've seen various vulnerabilities where even SMS message can exploit those devices. It's all about breaking the code and how good that quality of that code actually is. Many of us says, well, I have nothing to lose or I don't have anything important. Right? I have no money and we have no data that someone would, would want. And those are not really true statements. It's basically living in a denial that each of us has at least maybe $500 on a bank account and can be become a victim of cyber extortion. And shutting down your business just for the pleasure of someone can do so, it's also a threat that you need to encounter in your risk management in a book. Unfortunately, the bad news is it takes $300 to conduct cyber debt on any of you right now listening on the line. For $300, there is an individual on the planet that will go and break into your system, into your email, into your home computer, and will provide that access to another individual who wants that access. Another one is that what does it really take to do a million of damages to an enterprise? A botnet can be purchased for $3,000. There's a study done for insurance carrier who was bombed by an individual who bought a botnet for $3,000, whole network, and cost around $5 million of damages. What these cyber criminals do really make, it's not as glamorous as you think. On average, it's actually kind of low. It's around $7,000 to $8,000 per month, according to some of the studies, which you can um, go and uh, see on our website. So that link actually in here is, uh, if you Google, a fistful of dollars gained by hacking American citizens, enterprises, and the U.S. government um, will point you to the sources where information was obtained. What happened was uh, in some of the emails early in last year was um, cyber extortion through what we call extortion. They, perhaps that individual was looking through the camera or looking at the content adult content that was not necessarily appropriate. And even such Nigerian cyber scam in New York metro area cashed out $300,000. So as we can see, these attacks will continue. And the main reason is that there is a good monetary gain for threat actors and very low cooperation of federal law enforcement around the world to catch them. What is the real ransomware? Ransomware is the piece of software that encrypts your file. It's not necessarily malicious. Encryption is actually natively good for your computer. The ransomware usually spreads through the trickery. So there is a dropper and a botnet that's being deployed to your computer. And a ransomware is just another piece of a program that encrypts it. And that's important to distinguish. There is a persistence that threat actor conduct in the enterprise. And second level is truly the deployment of the ransomware for the organization. The main reason is to make your data unavailable. And unless you pay the ransom and you obtain a special key, you usually can't decrypt it. Also, don't get excited that you perhaps find a decryptor online because some of these companies are truly a fake. What they do is they pay the trade actor to get the keys and then you pay them to actually get data back. So. Most of, the, most of the ransomware today um, is really at the NSA, CIA, industry strength, where unless you have keys, you're not able to decrypt the data. What these threat actors are leveraging are forgotten, unpatched, misconfigured systems, and specific vulnerabilities in PowerPoint, Word, and Excel documents. So it's not as easy to protect and defend yourself. How do you usually get infected? Generally in the three ways, phishing, exploit of something that is exploitable, and through your external devices and third parties. We all understand that phishing can come in a form of attachments, links, and something that you clicked on. Exploit means that a more sophisticated threat actor actually attack your system with an exploit, with a code, 
that breaks that system and gains the foothold on your network. Third parties have been a target for many, many years. And generally the weakest chain works always well for the threat actors, but it can attack a third party and uh, then get connectivity to your enterprises. In the ransomware special editions that we had multiple times, we had, for example, a case where decryption actually failed on a RAID system. And then we spoke back and forth with a threat actor about decrypting that data. What they told us is that they are not our tech support. And if they pay them more Bitcoins, then maybe they're going to help us. So the story tells you that these threat actors do not create enterprise-grade encryption systems. It's very buggy, and it may not work even when you try to decrypt it, and it can cost you dollars to rewrite their application. In a healthcare, for many years we've seen that the ransomware is just secondary, third, or 25th intrusion. We had a high level of medical society in, in the New York area, and ransomware was 25th or 26th intrusion into their organization. It's important to have a plan for cyber extortion. Where do you get a Bitcoin? How do you really work? And uh, what would you execute? What kind of playbook would you truly execute uh, in it? Well, so what are the prevention methods? The method that has completely, I would say, nothing to do with the cybersecurity is truly your business continuity program. Do you have offline backups? Do you have backups to recover? Are, are you testing these backups? Could these backups be tampered with by the threat actor? So ultimately, key to remediation and recovery is having offline backup that threat actor cannot manipulate. The next one is access control. How do you control access to your organization? What threat actor needs is an account that can enable him for the lateral movement through your enterprise and deploy ransomware to almost all of the computers. Important is to understand that ransomware or droppers, the programs, Trojan and botnets that give them connectivity back and forth to your organization are actually dropped at the endpoint. Important is to monitor and actively see, do the threat hunter on endpoint, see for any potential intrusion into your organization. So threat hunt, Definitely very important, right? Right after your Eastern egg hunt should be a cybersecurity threat hunt. Many of us have seen this message, ransomware files encrypted. Now, some of the messages today are truly just the text files, right? The, the threat actors don't care anymore to make them pretty. They just put the email where you have to contact them. Why Samsung is important to talk about when it started in 2016? Because it was the first one that massively exploited vulnerabilities and exploits, especially Java-based. And why Java? Four billion devices were in Java. Who were the victims? City of Atlanta. Uh, and the, the, the list can go on and on and on, right? And in an um, indictment that has close to 200 pages of two Iranians, you can read how much havoc the Samsung actually created. But what it's set up, it's a new norm in how ransomware is being deployed. Forget the phishing, focus on vulnerabilities. Larger enterprises have inability or ineffective process to patch vulnerabilities and let's focus on those. We've seen now nation state threat after called APT41 moving in and deploying ransomware as a decoy, complete decoy to the operations for data exfiltration. This is exploitation for Samsung, penetration testing of the server. They generally bought this lead from internet. Then they scan the network to find, to find a possible entry. Generally it's your SharePoint ticketing, anything that's a web-based application facing outside. Then they got into through stolen credentials, purchase credentials, brute force credentials, uh, password spraying against your system. Once they get in, they leverage your database system uh, to obtain an admin account. And generally, database systems are installed wrongly with super admin credentials or administrative credentials on many of the enterprises. Once they obtain that account, then they conduct 
a lot of movement and touch point to all the servers, deploy them, and uh, encrypt your system. Quite simple. Very important paper that I want you to read is the analysis of Drydex, bit payment, and double payment campaign. So what we've done it in here is we, in late 2019, December to January 2020, we had multiple victims of very specific and very large and sophisticated campaign done in a bit payment and double payment operation. So I suggest you go and you read, read that paper from us. Um, the bit payment operation to start a program, run as, no exe, and then you see the bit payment, uh, exe, right? So quite, quite sophisticated. I would say they threat after in mimicking, uh, more complex type of deployment, more complex type of uh, execution. Um, and um, uh, we, we've seen them leveraging quite quite level of sophistication. Another one that I really want you to go and look it up on our website is analysis of Drydex with payment and double payment campaigns in a PDF form. That's basically being enriched after the analysis. Um, and uh, it literally is the case study from various cases that we have done in that era. This is how it was uh, deployed, for example, and also how we deployed our cyber vaccine. Uh, you, have, you will have a slide available, uh, and it describes these processes that these spawned and why we had to deploy the cyber vaccine. In a nutshell, I can tell you that the, there's something called the process ID in an um, application called Explorer.exe. It's we call them threats, and two of them have been injected. They were controlling the download and termination of the persistence, which was the botnet or Trojan called Drydex on, on, on that system. And we did have to create our own cyber vaccine to basically vaccinate these computers for the full removal of persistence, threat actor from that system, and also containment and eradication of any files and any malicious content that was basically delivered to that system. What happened was, in, in those uh, cases, especially with the Drydex, the cyber vaccination became the ultimate process how we were able to eradicate and contain infections from this virus across the organization. So our process, if you, through logistically, what we've done is that we come to the organization, we detect what kind of strain that virus, that ransomware malware actually is. Once we have that and we reverse engineer that in our lab, we look through eradication and containment process. What does it take to isolate these hosts to prevent any lateral movement and reinfection of any other host on the network? And we do that through the system hardening and also through creation of a custom cyber vaccine that is deployed for that specific strain of the virus. The main reason we have to do that is that these endpoint protection programs probably failed for that reason, right? They couldn't really deal with this strain of the virus. So for us, it's important to create a cyber vaccine and deploy it through the lateral movement very similar way as the threat actor was and eradicate and contain, isolate hosts from the lateral movement, potential infection and reinfection of the systems that have not been compromised or have been already cleaned. You can read about Rider's vaccine. It's actually published on a GitHub. We decided this time to publish it and uh, not keep it just for ourselves. So you can have a beauty to enjoy it. Description of it, how it does, how it works. Um, what, what does it check for the schedule tax, for example, for some registries entries. Uh, Windows start menu, right, the startup link, uh, if, if that is exists. And then what, what it actually removes, how it terminates the program, how it search, for example, for those process IDs, for those injected DLL libraries that I mentioned before. Um, it might be quite technical, but uh, if, if you go and read it through it, you should be able to actually use and deploy. If not, they're always here for you. I did mention the Exdetic forum. And when we stumbled on this forum in early 2015, we did not realize what a significant platform such dark web eBay of credentials will become. Most of the servers, like RDP servers, that have been compromised, even deploy the XDedit botnet 
for connectivity back and forth. At the era that we had access and we were cut off from the platform, around 70,000 servers worldwide have been available on that platform. And these included government, corporations, ISPs, telcos, universities. What the schema, cyber criminals hack into a server, then they offer the access to the server on exedit, then another group of ransomware individuals come and buys this as a marketing lead, and then they use it for data, phishing, ransomware, cyber espionage, and even APTs. What's the cost? Very low. It's up to $10 per compromised device. Well, there have been some devices with more significance, but most of them were sold under $10. New phenomena also brought a momentum with extortion that had been classified as extortion. These are all real cases that you've seen in here and online predators that extorted individuals online, either through the text messages, phone calls, perhaps some of the adult meetings that those individuals had and then following up on married individuals and extorting for the money and monthly payment. Um, there was also a dump of content that these individuals secretly recorded and used in a revenge when the individual did not want to proceed with the payment. This is the cyber extortion email that perhaps you, many of you have seen. This is true example where your character is being challenged and it's nothing different than very famous scan 911 of Nigerian princess. And still yet, many people that fall victim for this scam. And as I mentioned to you, in New York metro area, we had close to 300,000 dollars collected in the first week when the scam was launched and it's a complete scam there's nothing real outside of that these individuals these hackers and threat actors have your credentials and they do have understanding who you are and they're asking you for money knowing your username and password that they've got from a dump of your credentials on some of the dark web forum portals Perhaps Carmelia Dupont became a celebrity. She has been translated into 40 languages. And her picture is probably still on a Facebook. She's the one who gets you excited and perhaps undressed secretly in your room while she's recording everything that you do. And next you know, you receive a notification that you've been classified as a child predator on YouTube. And you do need to pay because the extortion will continue. Very disturbing was the Interpol matter with uh, Daniel Peridat that was connected to a cyber ring in Philippines close to 30, 40 individuals work at a facility. At the time of the arrest, 56 individuals, uh, actually 50, 58 individuals were picked up by Interpol in this uh, schema. And what we see as a new wave is extortion of teenagers. Anyone between 15 to 21 is a really great target because they have access to wallets of their parents. We published potentially compromised IP on our website. And if you do search for it and you put type word university and submit, a uh, list will come up. We were contacted by one of the broadcast radio stations in the New York area that wanted to conduct a show about these various university compromises. One of them had over 15 servers, including student data that had been published and students had been signing and conducted payments 
through the online portal. Now I want to give you some of the assessment tools. They're always, I've been always told that the world is somehow gloomy and dark whenever I speak, and I only describe the threat actor and the threat and everything that those evil forces can actually do to you. So I want to give you some of the ideas. How would you know that you've been hacked? What would you do when your enterprise is actually compromised? How does the one recover from the situation? And some of the tools to minimize your cyber risk and increase your maturity and posture while you are conducting your daily business. In a dark Iran, a hackers had to blast the music on the computers. First, they tried to reboot, uh, to create some document closure, but none of it really worked. So what they did is they played ACDC, Thunderstrike, on all of the computers. When your computer is playing music on its own, it's time to wake up and acknowledge that you've been compromised. But what the messaging really here is that we all know the answer. Somehow in technology, we all knew it's going to happen. While no one from us could stop it. It's very important to address real maturity and real posture of the organization. Conduct assessment like a trend hunting, real pen testing, real red teaming that will show you true posture of your organization, not just something beautifully colorful on a piece of paper, but have a true understanding. What your posture really is and how much pressure could you really withstand when a cyber attack actually comes in? What you should do? Well, jokingly, I can tell you, number one is to update your resume, but it's really a step zero. And main reason for that is that there is no more need for heroes right now. There is a need for collaboration. Cybersecurity is a team sport, as John Felker, assistant director of CISA at the DHS said. This is a time when you can shine by collaboration. This is not a time when you're going to shine as your own hero, that you're going to save the whole company. So put yourself in a position and understanding why things fail. You probably know, but we don't have to tell everyone, I told you so, or as I told you in the past, all those things that you haven't done, right? That's not the time to do that. It's important now to focus on the team and cooperation of the team. How will you remediate? Every company has its own culture has its own tribal leadership, has its own questions that you need to answer. From time to start, time to finish, what you really need is to build a successful incident response plan. And not only on a piece of paper, but also through the tribal knowledge, through the culture of your organization, propagated plan from the executive level to the leadership and management level to individuals who would be conducting and working with a crisis management firm such as us. It's very challenging when we arrive on a site and for two days no one can even provision properly credentials for us. We can't collect the evidence. We can't start analysis. Imagine a hospital that cannot perform a surgery for two days. The patients would be dying. Yet in technology, there's an accepting status. We just don't know how to work with external firms. We are not as great at it to integrate someone externally into the organization, yet or admit that we need the help from those individuals. It's completely obvious when we seek, we all seek doctors, but when we are cyber sick, we somehow have an idea that we're going to solve everything by ourselves. How would you minimize the impact of a cyber intrusion, cyber compromise, or data breach in your environment. Unfortunately, there is no one bullet, one cyber pill that you can take and you're going to be cyber healthy. It does not exist. Even cyber vaccine only vaccinates your computer against one specific strain of the virus. Yet we're developing some of the more universal type of the vaccine, but still, it will be 
with the techniques, tactics, and procedures of the threat actor. It not, will not be completely universal. It's important to understand that cybersecurity is connection of what you perceive as your brand, as the value of your brand, through the circle of protection, detection, analysis, and responding constantly to any cyber threat, any cyber intrusion, any potential event that you would consider malicious at your enterprise. And you're constantly tuning those tools and you're working with those tools, you're updating them, you're updating the process, you're updating the skill set of the people. It doesn't stay static. You do need to conduct comprehensive security test assessment, like a real assessment, right? What I mentioned before, penetration testing or, or, or a threat hunt, and understanding how they can help you to protect your assets by discovering the vulnerabilities that you have, that you don't get mad at your vendor that he locked up your users, because you know what? Threat actor can lock up your users, and he can lock all your Active Directory accounts. That doesn't mean the test went wrong. It means that you're insecure. That's what it really means. Detection is very important. Look at the era we are living in. Detection and monitoring is super important. Detect that something is happening, that something is not right. It's quite important. It's important to look what we call the hybrid mode in managed security, to look for level three type of providers that enrich the ecosystem that you already created. There's nothing wrong to bring a third set of eyes into your organization. From level one to level three to level, level three is super important. Level three and above, right? That's where the internal response firms do play in. You're also not going to have as great threat intel and understanding of the techniques, tactics, and procedures as these firms do because they do these forensic investigations for a living. We do 300 cases a year. We've seen quite a bit. It's also important in analysis, conduct proper scope, what that investigation really is, and how far you really wanna go, how you wanna analyze your data, and what would you do in terms of analysis. Advisory and training, security awareness, especially tabletop, starting with executive, get their buying, get their budget, super important. Get ready, because you know what? The way you cannot prevent to never get a cold, you cannot prevent that you will not have some cyber virus on your network. Each of us has some kind of virus, but we do have those tools that perhaps help to clean it, contain it, eradicate. So get ready. You do need to respond to cyber emergencies. You just don't know what that is. You don't know if that's a cyber cold or cyber cancer that will kill you as a company because that happens too. The companies do go bankrupt because of the cyber attack. Create those incident response plans. Bring the third party. Bring the FBI. Bring whoever you need to do in the room and talk about the cyber incident that would happen to you. Ransomware and business email compromise are two main vectors according to the FBI report every year. They're not super sophisticated. The tools are getting more sophisticated but the schema of the attack is not very sophisticated. It's all about gaining access to your money. Either wire them and take them out or ask them as a form of extortion and ransomware. Digital forensic and digital science plays a significant role in analyzing and discovering the threat actors based on their characteristics. And the skilled threat hunter can discover much quicker intrusion and lateral movement of the threat actor in your organization. If you need more information, feel free to subscribe to our newsletter where we provide quite a bit of um, information related to um, uh, cyber vaccines and uh, also the process of eradication, containment, detection, and how we create those by analyzing of malicious stream of the viruses. There are also resources on the internet where you can look to either submit your matter or look for various norms that are needed 
for you to understand the guidelines and principles for proper response to cyber emergency events and incidents. And in summary, what is important is to create what we call the zero trust zone. We get to the point where you cannot trust the most of it that you actually have seen on the internet. It is super important to develop the relationship between the vendors and law enforcement. This is a game where you do need partners. Look at solutions that you develop in-house. Do you believe that it would be effective to help you defend and respond to cyber extortion and ransomware type of incident? I know it's not easy, and I often get the question, how do I fight for the budget when this is a low probability but has high impact? And yes, 46% is probably you're going to be hit by nation state, which is not very high. There are over 90% different reasons why business would not exist tomorrow. It's not easy to fight for the budget, understood. Military is very good because they, what they do is they train, train, and practice. And drill, create a cyber drill. Tabletop at your organization. Very important to do a constant education, outreach to your employees. Have plans, recovery plans, as you mentioned, perhaps not in the realm of cybersecurity, but having good business continuity plan, good disaster recovery plan is something that you need. And be ready. They've been doing this for a while, but I tell you there's always unknown unknown that we don't know. Well, feel free to subscribe to our newsletter. And with that, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, looking forward, if you have any questions. Life ours, your digital world secured.